Good morning, Nuggets. Let's get roots for week five. So this week you have Cardi, Seed, Center, Cert, Cess, Crone, Side, and Sice. So first up, on our left side, we see some doctors studying images of a heart, and you see a doctor holding a heart with a stethoscope. These doctors are cardiologists. They're people who study um, the heart. This is somebody that you would go to for your blood pressure, or if you had heart disease, etc. And over here, a very familiar image, but you may not realize what it's called. This is called a cardiogram. It is a visual representation of your heartbeat. So if you haven't guessed it already, cardi means heart. Next up, we have seed. Notice that they can be spelled differently, but that they both do mean the same thing. So let's look at the images on the left. So first, we see an image of fall, followed by an image of winter. Fall precedes winter. The picture below it, these are a picture of my two younger sisters. They're younger than me, so I preceded them in birth. So after me, we have Maria and then Maria preceded Alyssa. She's the youngest. On the right side of your screen, you have a try-hard fish. We have an exceeding expectations dial, and we have the 110%. If you are exceeding expectations, it means you are going the extra mile. You are going above and beyond what is expected of you. So what would you guess seed means? Seed commonly means go. Um, so like when you exceed, you are going beyond or outside of expectations. Uh, but it can also be used to mean the word yield. Uh, and if you aren't sure what yield means, yield means to give in, uh, which is very similar to the word surrender. So another word that uses this root is concede. When you concede uh, in an election, it means you are giving in and saying that the other person won. So there's a bonus example for you. On to the third one, Centra. Uh, on the left-hand side, if you've ever been to New York, you will recognize uh, this green ceilinged room right here as Grand Central Station. And it's Grand Central because it's located, um, or at one time, it was located in the center of the city's transportation system. So it was the center hub, hence Grand Central Station. On the right side, you see a device that uh, you might get to use in some of your science classes one day, um, particularly biology or chemistry, and this is called a centrifuge, which operates by spinning very rapidly and using centripetal force um, to separate different substances and elements so that they can be tested. So a centrifuge is basically operates by pivoting materials around a central point, like you see down here, and also in the graphic here. I think you can tell what this one means. Center means center. <laughs> no brainer, right? Your next route is cert. You often see uh, stickers on your food that certifies that it is what it claims to be. So for example, certified Angus beef, if that sticker's on it, it means yes, this came from an Angus cow. Um, if you pick up a vegetable or a piece of fruit at the grocery store and it has a certified organic sticker on it, that means they're not just saying it's organic. Someone independently has actually given it the stamp of approval and said, yes, this is organic. And then, of course, when you graduate, uh, you get a diploma, and this certifies that you are an intelligent human being and that you have passed all your classes. It certifies that you have graduated high school. So there's certify. On the right side, you see two very different images. You see an orchestra where they are all playing different parts, but they're all playing together. And then the lower image, you see a group of ants trying to move um, a piece of bread or food, and they're all working together in concert. When you use the word concerted, if you are making a concerted effort, it means everybody is working with one another with the same certainty to make something happen. So cert means for sure or certain. Our next route is cess. 
So let's look at our visuals and our examples. So here we see a handicap accessible route or wheelchair accessible route. And down here we have a picture probably from a military installation where you're not supposed to go. So we would say uh, the wheelchair ramp is accessible to people um, who can't negotiate stairs. But we'd say that the bottom image means that this area is inaccessible, meaning you cannot go in there unless you're authorized personnel. On the right side, what are these pictures of? Something that you always miss when you come to high school, and that is recess. And everybody, of course, misses recess because you get to go out of class, and if the weather's nice, get to go outside and play. Cess, what does cess mean then? Yes, it again means to go, yield, or to surrender. Because when something's accessible, it means you can go there. If it's inaccessible, you can't go there. And recess, you're getting to go outside. So you will notice that cess has the exact same meaning as seed. Uh, it is listed separately here in your notes because you should have a separate word tree for it. But on the quiz, cess will be assessed together with both of the spellings of seed. So you, you, you won't be penalized trying to guess which one's which. They mean the same thing. Our next root should be very easy for you because we've talked a lot about a word that uses this root recently. So the root is crone, and on the left-hand side you see uh, this gentleman, probably a monk or a scribe, and he is writing down a history. In the upper right, you see a newspaper, the San Francisco Chronicle, and then here we have a picture of a Tumblr feed. All of these images are examples of chronicles. So a chronicle is something that uh, gives uh, an event or a history. So newspapers, they chronicle events. Uh, your Tumblr feed or Facebook feed or any type of blog chronicles your thoughts and your daily life. And this guy here, a historian, he chronicles um, famous events that should be remembered for posterity. Over here on the right-hand side, we have another very similar word, a chronology. So timelines are good examples of chronologies because they show you um, the different events in an item or a person's history. So you see these a lot for people, but I chose instead to show a chronology of the Game Boy and how it has grown over the years. The image at the top shows the chronology of a possible relationship. So you can see the events are sort of depicted in order they meet, they fall in love, they get married, they have a baby, their family grows, and eventually they reach old age together. The word that you should be familiar with, of course, is related to chronology, and that is the adjective form, chronological order. So what does chron mean? It means time. And our last root for this week, side or size. This root is actually where you get a common slang term um, that you may be familiar with. So on the left we have an image of scissors. Scissors, of course, cut paper, cut string, cut fabric. They cut things. On the right side we have a representation for homicide. And of course the root homo stands for man. Side, if you commit homicide, it means that you've killed another person. So side or size literally means to cut or to kill. And that's it for this week. Before you stop this video, listen to this important review. I've noticed on your word trees, many of you are finding great words, but you're not using them correctly in a sentence and it's costing you points. And the main reason why you're not using them correctly is because you are not paying sufficient attention to the words part of speech. So let's take our last example word. Let's say I found homicide and I wanna put it on my root tree. I need to use it in a sentence with context clues that show the meaning of the word and also the meaning of the root. So let's say I wrote, the homicide maniac wanted to kill everyone she saw. This is incorrect because the part of speech is a noun, and here I'm trying to use it as an adjective. So I need to make sure that I use the adjective form, which is homicidal. 
So what you want to make sure that you do is check the dictionary or look up the word and check the different parts of speech that are available for a word before you write your sentence. Here's one more example. So let's say I'm trying to say that this person killed people. So I'm trying to use this word as a verb. The maniac homicided her whole family. The problem with that is that homicide is not a verb and there actually isn't a verb form of this word. So instead, I would say the maniac committed homicide when she killed her whole family. Now that I've depressed you with these examples, just keep in the back of your mind, always check your part of speech and make sure that you're using words grammatically in your sentences so that you get full credit. A few more reminders. Remember you can study on Quizlet. Remember for word trees, you may no longer just define the word in a sentence. You must actually use the word in a sentence. If it helps you to write the definition first and then write your sentence, that's fine with me. But make sure right here that you use context clues. Do not just say she was homicidal. If I had never seen that word before, I wouldn't be able to tell what it meant. And also, I would be wondering who she was. So make sure you have context and make sure you use nouns. And as I just reviewed on the previous side, make sure you pay attention to the words part of speech. That's all for this week, lovelies. Start studying and get ready to do your practice quizzes this week. See you in class. Bye.